So, what do you think the patient's problem is? What is this phenomenon? This could be so called dystonia. Okay, dystonia is a problem, possibility. Yes. Hypocalcemia problem causing a you know yeah, vocal that's cord as well as yeah, that's a fast one due to or due to hypocalcemia. It's etiology. Let's first find out what is the phenomenology. Is it a dystonia? Anything and anything else? Myotonia, sir. Myotonia is another problem, a possibility. Okay. It's you said that tetany more likely. Something like that, tetany. Yeah, that means that's passives, better think passives. These are the possibility. Now let us see the possibility. It can be an apraxia. Vocal cord uh, is, uh, you know, is difficult. It, uh, it, it can be, but you have altered the points later. Can be a dystonia, already somebody has said. Spasm is mimicking. Spasm and dystonia, just you can't differentiate between the two. Alien hand is another phenomenon. Or it is something. These are the possibilities you have to keep in mind. Let us come one by one. Is it dystonia? Uh, yes, I do. Special yeah. task with him. But the problem is that dystonia by definition is pattern and repetitive. So this is not a patterned movement. Okay. And it's not repetitive. Each time it is different. It is, did you get the point? The, the dystonic contractions are always the same pattern should occur. It comes episodically, spontaneously it occurs, and, then, and, uh, and it's not a pity. Sometimes it will occur, sometimes it may not occur. So, but it, it, so in this patient, it's occurring only in specific position, also while he's tapping. It, right. That, that's uh, not said it's correct. It's on trying to flex, it becomes manifest. But even other times, also it occurs, what you said is correct. Action precipitation is a point favoring a dystonia, that point taken. But it is not pattern movement as a repetitive movement. <laughs> that can be alien hand. You know it's unlikely for alien hand because alien hand is usually an act with the patient performs. It is not a movement like a flexing, opening like that. It's a purposeful act. It's not an act which the patient has done, and it is even though it is out of control of his hand, it is not an alien hand. Is it apraxia? Not at all, because he can do the same act later on normally. So that means it's not apraxia. So dystonia is a possibility which you can't exclude. Any other possibility you want to consider? Uh, tonic seizure, sir. Yeah, that's a tonic. Let's see what do you what investigation you want. MRI, so e e EG MRI e and calcium. Okay, calcium is normal. <laughs> MRI, this is the MRI prior sequence, but if the abnormality was not in this MRI, that particular film is not there. Anyway, the MRI showed a small area of diffusion restriction on the right prefrontal cortex. RBS is normal, and this is thought to have been fought. And treated no further episodes for the next from the next day onwards. So, what would be the likely possibility? Tonic seizures. Yeah, it's a tonic seizure. So, what is the treatment given? Treatment is AD, no further episodes. Now, this phenomenon and uh, it's a episodic tonic conduction of the finger flexes, preventing from opening the head. This is not a common type of seizure. Now let us see why should why are we thinking in terms of a jack in a jack seizure is that we look at the tonic conduction in between it goes for the index finger goes into jerky movement. I'll show that video once video part one second. Can you can you can you can you very carefully the number index. But now it comes later.
That there is no contrast enhancement in the temporal region. There is some uh, suspicious contrast enhancement of the meninges on the right parietal region. Here. Here again, there was some suspicion. So it went for an area of softer enhancement over the right parietal cortex. CSO was done. CSO showed 56 cells, predominant lymphocytic pyocytosis. Protein was normal, sugar was normal. CBNAT was negative, TBP said negative, cytology for malignant cells was negative. Now, what do you want to do now? Is it encephalitis, sir? Yeah. Autoimmune. Pardon? Autoimmune. Yeah, it can be But it's a short duration, three, two, three days duration. With four HSCP, 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 sir. Uh, we are thinking of an encephalitis as a first possibility because we have no clue as to what it is. So, CT test and abdomen was taken with the converse, which is normal. There's no source of any tuberculous focus or any uh, something suspect that any of us. So, patients put on SA clover and safety axon for 10 days. Patient continued to remain drowsy. And subsequently, patients want a hypernatry mean between, which has corrected. And the eighth day, patient sensor improved and discharged. Patient was not given any steroid. So it probably must have been a mild form of herpesophilus in some other enterprises, which has caused this focal seizure, a tonic spasm of the, of the hand as a manifestation of the See, MRI was repeated on the third MRI, which showed uh, that this, this, um, this uh, finding similar to that, but it less than before. Now, this is the three MRIs which is being comparing. The first one on the right was done on the seventh, first one here. This is the, the third one here is the first one. Second is the eleventh one, the last one on the left hand side. So you can see the first MRI was normal, second is some hypodensity, third MRI also the hypodensity is slightly increased. Here again, you can find out the and uh, under the sequence, not sequence, the same in a, uh, under cut showing the same abnormality, uppermost cut showing the upper cut showing the abnormality in three days. This is the uppermost cut. So, this is the story of the patient. So, the case was brought mainly to show the atypical presentation of focal seizure as tonic spasms. Mimicking a hypercalcemia or mimicking a focal disease. Okay. Any questions on that case? Uh, why vasculitis workup was not done? Short duration. 
uh, because it's it could be but very short duration it could be one day but the picture was canary picture everything was from the show so one more doubt please no seen in the needle number low the site of the picture was in sublime is a player said it was the sick and presenting with apathy and focus is to three four days was possible to sir no passes okay sir in a case of future why was he not able to open and how was it precipitated by movement yeah that very often occurs in particular in focus seizures especially in diabetic that's what is said specifically mentioned diabetic hyperosmia state can precipitate it can be action induced seizures in fact sometime back in the can i i officially see the can uh, this thing what's up in that uh, jake player presented one case of action precipitated focal seizure did you see that video in fact uh, joy commented that this case is well known in a, in a, i said it could be due to diabetes then uh, jake was saying something else and joy said it is well it it said it is due to focal seizure precipitated by action so this is called in a, uh, intention precipitated seizures that is very common in diabetes but can also occur any other seizures can be triggered by movement so uh, they are very common for uh, limb shaking tas also the limb shaking ta characteristically occurs in a particular posture that is characteristic when it gets up the it will not occur while lying down or sitting and the patient gets up from sitting or lying so it will occur and it will and that it did not at other times that's a peculiarity of uh, limb shaking or more doubt if it's a seizure then uh, why that uh, he, he was not able to release only so because not the contact yeah in fact anyone who is not able to release can be due to either weakness of the extensors or overaction of the extensors here what is happening is that the flexor muscles are overactive flexor fingers are overactive because of some spasm overactivity of the muscle that can be due to dystonia that can be due to spasm in syntetiny that can be due to focal seizures so there is no doubt yeah there is another hyponatremia then dystonic seizure yeah MR can be due Yeah, yeah, it must be. You are thinking yeah. about a T, but the facial breakage is not existing, no? Yeah, facial breakage, dystonia, hyponatremia. No, yeah, like this pattern is not a pattern is not like a T a facial breakage is not existing. Facial breakage is not existing. Even it will not be prolonged dilated at all. It come. I can show like that, like that. It come. I can show the two three videos of facial breakage is not existing. It lasts for a few seconds and stops. and it goes to the face and the limbs simultaneously here it remains in the hand clenched for a long period of time and he is trying to open it it does not come that's not the pattern in which you begin to start this so otherwise with hyponatremia that possibility is very strong so it is not improve within steroid energy so in this patient they had some hypophonia initially so what could be the cause for a hypophonia in this case sir? Probably maybe an unrelated ENG problem because that never occurred again. Uh, so the final MRI shows uh, other side temporal lobe involvement. Sir. So yeah, taking okay. the presentation, could it be autoimmune also, sir? It could be. It could be autoimmune, but the uh, you know I have not done for a study of autoimmune panel. I have not done. But the fact that he improved, the evolution was to take like any other type of like this, you know, process focal seizure, altered sensorium, after the end, then to move improving over a period of one week, more likely autoimmune. Maybe this thing, but autoimmune more subacute in evolution, but nobody can rule out not autoimmune. Sir, why was not steroid given normally in such situation? Yeah, like we don't give steroid. In, a, in an encephalitis, we don't give steroid at all. We we should do not give steroid at all in encephalitis. We should not give, and only if you suspect autoimmune encephalitis, we give that to be a kind of steroid. Just to mean that, but it's not with associated IV and things like that. Because it took eight days for him to have some improvement. Yeah, because that altered sensory was due to coexisting hyperatremia, and encephalitis take long time for improvement. The different some are not improved at all. The duration of improvement does not enter a diagnosis of epilepsy. 
sir, the semiology of the hand, sir, does it look to hypocalcemia, sir, because there's more flexion at the wrist? No, no. In fact, um, as Umar was telling, previously also has shown very type, many various types of hypocalcemic ketonic spasms. And then classical textbook description of this main in occlusion, occlusion is that for obstetrician hand is not at all, not often seen. They can have flexion movement, they can have isotron trismus, isotron patients, but with the frowing of the eye, spasm of the face, laryngeal spasms, all can occur with hypocalcemia. What Raymond Adams has said is that you just cannot differentiate dystonia from spasms. Is there any way to differentiate? No way to differentiate. One day, relative point is a spasm is painful. Sir, uh, I had a patient earlier. She present with uh, torticollis. Hmm. Significant uh, torticollis. Uh, then actually, I want to give some water or something like that. Then I checked the calcium, which was 5.6. Yeah. That's how it can present in various ways. You can affect any part of the muscle, I should say. Okay. I'll go to the next case. Almost I'm showing you similar problems now in the last the next three, four videos. This is a story of a 54-year-old man. He said, have you had traumatic subdural hematoma in 2015? Operated, did not have any weakness following that or at that time. Now the story now starts six months back. Patient noticed difficulty in opening his hand and grip on the left side which got aggravated for the last four months. Repeat CT taken four months back showed right parietal atrophy, probably sequelae of the old surgery or whatever he had had, traumatic subdural, no? he must have some brain injury at that time. There's no sensory complaints whatsoever. So this is the complaint. He is unable to open his hand grip for the left side. No complaints of the left lower. Now, if you can understand my language, this language, you can see what he says. He says that his fingers get stuck together. Suppose he is driving the car with them, the left, and they're putting the, uh, driving the car, putting the gear. He cannot release the hand. You have to take the help of the right hand to release it. He will demonstrate. You can see that even though you can understand. <laughs> I'll show the full video again. Okay. Now go to the examination of the patient proper. Tailors were normal. Yes, but mine is past surgery on the left hand. Power was normal. Normal power. No, he cannot release the hand. And he put a release it. 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 Try, try. Finding it difficult. Let's see what is happening. Okay. Okay. Put it. 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 He put it open. He is trying with his right hand to open it. Now it opened up. He put it in. He asked him to spread out the fingers. Very clumsy movement. Most of the muscles are all normal power.
बैठे गए जमीन पर मोटे करते जमीन पर मोटे करते जमीन करते मोटे करते जमीन करते तो पिन पिन और सिंक कॉर्ड नहीं इसमें तो ट्रॉल इट एफेक्ट्स मार्बल साइकिल बिल्स ऑन द लेफ्ट साइड तो इस ये नेम रिजेक्शन में स्टैंडर्ड ऑन द Let's see standard join sets on the left side. But if the joints is in bed, movement is in bed. Yes, right. Adi, my other number, I need to send it to you. Number C C is there. Is there a number C C? You cannot identify the letter drawn. It's a wrong link. And that the lock place is next to you. It's all very difficult. In between, fingers are just difficult. We could not say how many fingers are in between the two cuts. Okay. We couldn't say how many fingers are in between. But comes up, there is no consensus that we are saying that we could not say. Ten minutes to eleven. Okay. 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 Let me read correct. Now, on examination, shimmer pressure is normal. Motor fast is with the left upper limb. Power normal. Severe loss of hand and finger dexterity. He could not open his fingers after closing for a long period of time. Impaired joint sense, position sense, tactile localization, gratis TCM. Now, what is his problem in the left hand? What is his involuntary movement? Apraxia. Idea motor apraxia. Okay, apraxia. Alien hand, alien hand, myotonia. Okay, it is not apraxia because apraxia here by, uh, by definition, weakness, sir. Uh, weakness. Apraxia, should be normal with the sense. Yeah, apraxia, but that means you need to carry out a learned motor act. This is only unable to release the grip. All other activities you could do with the hand. Okay. So that is not an apraxia. Secondly, it is not um, alien hand. We can at all be before alien hand. Often is a it's a motor behavior. That's a purposeful, a semi-purposeful act is unable to do. Not opening, closing. That is not a simple motor act like that. That is affected. Myotonia is possible, but it is not consistent. It occurs occurs only occurs, occurs only occasionally. Sir, this occurs uh, all on one side in the form of yeah, the... Yeah. only confined to the left side. It's also against the myotonia. Somebody's myotonia can be asymmetric. So I would put this as a uh, spasticity because of the spasticity with the. No, no, but spasticity is there. But here, what happens is that if you look at the video, is that part I lay on a gun? I will show. अदरी 
So could this be a frontal release sign? No, no, no. It could be, but it's not a it's not an all that. Try, try. At other times, it's... Try it. Try it. Try it. Okay, okay, okay. I'll tell you what it is sign is. Now look very carefully, two, three signs. I'll show that. I'll come to that. Why not apraxy? It's not a land motor act. Problem is enabled to relax the fingers after contraction. It's not an act by itself. Why not myotonia? Because it is not present all the time, confined only to one hand. Can be alien hand, it is not a purpose black. Why not motor preservation possible, but less likely because when the hand finally open, only the index finger opened, not others. This will not occur in a motor preservation. Now look at the position once again. Can be dystonia. Action dystonia fingers perspect by action, action of forming. Yes. Yeah, look at that video once again. Look at the abnormal posturing of the thumb. And he's when the hand opens, only the index fingers open, getting opening. Other fingers remain closed. So this look at this. That means it's not the act is not the one. Only that some of the fingers are opening, some of the fingers are overacting. This is my hand. This is this patient's hand. So then it's he's unable to release the other three fingers, but only able to release the index finger and the thumb. Now it, it next video, the thumb gets an index finger get opened up, tongue gets opened up. Other fingers remain flexed. And the thumb again, you see, get adducted posture. You have to manually release that action. So that means there is overaction or a spasm of these fingers. The thumb and the thumb and the other the, and the middle two fingers is remaining in a, a there's a dystonic adduction, dystonic adduction. And dystonia can very well occur in parietal lesions. And the parietal dystonia is not patterned just like an extrapyramidal dystonia. It can take any pattern. So this is the old CT taken in 2015. He had a subdural hematoma, traumatic injury. This is the first CT. The second CT taken six months back, two months back. This is the what? Gliosis or the atrophy of the parietal complex. Uh, is it the same as parietal hand? No, parietal hand is different. Parietal hand, it, it's uh, the parietal hand is a soft, spongy, fem fem feminine hand, feminine, feminine hand with edema. That is uh, the parietal hand. But this is an abnormal posturing of the hand, the dystonic posture. Why? Why can't it be tetanic spasm like that? It could be. But what happened means. That is, as already told before, dystonia and spasm cannot be differentiated clinically. Both behave exactly the same. And if the, if the act is not a motor act per se, because when it opens, only few fingers are opening, other fingers remain adapted. That means there is some overaction of the muscles happening or enable to release that happening. Myotonia is a possibility. Myotonia can also behave like that. But why should we have to be present all the time? Sir, what is against the alien hand here? Alien hand, no, alien hand is, you know, uh, in a, what is the alien which I have seen is, it's a motor at a purposeful act. So, for example, the, the one hand is going and obstructing the other hand or catching for the other hand. That is the behavior of the hand. Motor behavior will be there. This is only clenching the hand, unable to release it. It's a motor act per se. You got the point. See, he's not, the person is not doing a motor act. Here, an act has been done and unable to release the hand. That's why it is not a, we can't call it as an alien hand. In the alien hand, it spontaneously moves and does an act. Hand behaves like, uh, it's not under its control, behaves like an alien. But that is not what is happening here. So, uh, Sir, why is it mo not motor perseveration? Yeah, it, it's also it could be a motor perseveration. See, there are two types of perseveration, as Vindu was telling. One is a recurrent perseveration, that is a continuous perseveration. Recurrent perseveration 
the patient continues to say mac over for repeated questions but that is not it can be why can't be continuous perseverance in continuous perseveration pa patient continue to perseverate with that motor act okay so that is a possibility here as i mentioned in the in that dd but if it continuous perseveration remember that it is a motor right continue to keep the hand but you know what happens when is open to release the hand few fingers only getting opened that means the other fingers that means it's not a problem of a motor right you understood or we should have released it totally and then continue okay sir yeah only few muscles are at least for the, that is that means it's the problem with the motor right itself Yeah. So, if the problem is with the motor act, why can't we call a limb kinetic apraxia, where he has inability to only extend the fingers? No, no. Limb kinetic apraxia is only a rapid inability to find um, find rapid movement. There, it's uh, he has got a problem. In that case, a limb kinetic apraxia because he cannot carry out a dexterity movement. By definition, to call apraxia, there should not be any motor sensory deficit. He has got a severe proprioceptive sensory loss in the hand. So by that thing, any inability to carry out that motor act, you cannot call it as a apraxia. That's it by classical definition of apraxia. The limb kinetic apraxia is not a true apraxia at all, because apraxia, as you know, cannot occur with the right hemisphere region. It is occurring here in this patient's left hand. That can occur only in a callosal apraxia. no uh, barring uh, uh, apart from that the limb kinetic apraxia is nothing but the loss of loss of inability or inability to carry out rapid fine movement or rapid dexterity movement seen with any cortical perimeter lesion that is limb kinetic apraxia here it is not the problem here it is on can the hand goes into contraction and then it not unable to release the grip on the releasing the grip there is overaction of the muscles some of them are overacting some of them are not overacting that is not the thing which occur in um limb kinetic apraxia limb kinetic apraxia is unable to do the movement as so it can then well be due to the basal ganglia involved post traumatic uh, delayed uh, extrapreneurial symptoms yeah, that, that's of course that's a possible so it's, i am i'm only talking about the semiology this is like a dystonia like a spasm of tetany is also a possibility but the context and everything tell you it's a focal dystonia and focal dystonia can occur with unitary basal ganglia lesion thalamic lesion parietal lesions here the patient had parietal signs that we thought it's a parietal that parietal otherwise it could well be a basal ganglia lesion so how do you treat this patient pardon treatment how do we do he had a good power how to and uh, okay, i could how to, how to how to treat this patient sir treat yeah that treatment is, treatment i'll tell you so this somebody conduction was done from somewhere else that is normal i'll skip that so he was put on pacitin 2 mg treatment at ada and came for follow up after two weeks and let us see the follow up video after treating with pacitin okay. okay. ോയിങ് <laughs> 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 this finger is going up like that the improved partially with pacitin so at the tosis and the pardon at the tosis at the totic moment uh, uh, you know it's not at the totic moment because it's remained for a long period of time did you see that the first body it's long period and the when the opens up the interest finger also remain for a long this is sinus sinus writhing movement that's not the pattern which you find you see here next to be i'll share the video with at the to say no another case of difficulty in opening the hand i'm showing all problem and difficulty in opening the hand this is a 33 year old female that complains of difficulty in walking 
after sitting for long times. Visibility improves after walking for some time. This has been there since the age of not 13 years from childhood, somewhere around um, 13 years. They say you are, as in childhood it has been there. The stiffness is more in the left lower limb. She has to drag her left lower limb while walking. That is her complaint. She still like, tell the story once again. I mean, video once again. No is definitely loosening of the chapels or buckling of the knee. She also does hands, especially of the left hand in cold weather. Okay. Now I can hear the story of the patient. I can translate language. No, what she's telling is that after sitting for a long time, she cannot walk quickly. Okay. No rest of the day. Then she said she has to, after when he starts walking, she has to literally drag her feet uh, lowerly for some time before it becomes all right. No, no, this happens on getting up a sitting position. In cold weather, even without the when she's walking about, sometimes it left lower limb goes into soft Okay, okay. 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 This is the posturing she develops. Let's see how she gets that. See, this is the way she walks. You can take the the pain of the left leg only. This person bilaterally, in fact, slightly more prominent. Let's also the walking once again. That's the hand goes into that positioning. It's really when death try to do something. Okay. First of the examination is normal. What is it PKD, PKD, sir? Um, it could be PKD. I think again is that. But it gets... Six, 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 six. Was there any perinatal insult in this case, sir? No. <laughs> somebody, if you, somebody is using two or... Two characters, then it's noise. So was there any perinatal insult in this case, like as toxic? Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. in, something happened in between. I don't know. Anyway, I'll share my screen once again. Oh. 
Okay, can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay, okay. So somebody, uh, somebody was asked some questions. I forgot. You said myotonia. Uh, myotonia, sir. Very good. Anything in some intelligences? Hakko, sir. Any perinatal insult in this case, sir? Any? No, perinatal insult is not there. Uh, somebody was asking about by a PKD, paroxysmicitis eugenic uh, dystonia. Okay, sometimes okay. it's in the hand, sometimes it's in the lower limb. Uh, the PKD cannot be ruled out. Often it starts occurring at the beginning of that, decreased, but it remained long time. It remained for a, a long period of time. And she also said that when she's walking about that, this occurs in between, even not kinase eugenic. Not all the time can you say more on starting to do that, but it can also occur in between, especially in cold weather. So PKD can also be precipitated by cold weather, and sometimes while walking in between, also they can occur. Yeah, that also, that also I have seen classically, but usually on I should say it's correct. That also can occur, it can it should be considered. But more often it is at the beginning of that, and the type of movement is not this one. It can dystonic. This is a dystonia. Usually in PKD, it's a choreothetotic type of movement. Choreothetotic. It's in paroxysmal dystonic type of uh, this thing is not, usually non kinesic The uh, DRD uh, can it present like this? Yeah, I can present like that. PKD, paroxysmal dystonia is on a big, in a, DRD is one cause of paroxysmal dystonia. Can present as paroxysmal dystonia. Parasmodistonia, one called DRD, hypocalcemia, some cerebral palsies, uh, Wilson disease, hypoparathyroidism, all can present as paroxysmal dystonias. So you think it's a dystonia or semiologically? Uh, this looks like so. Okay. So let us see the patient once again. Okay. What is, what is it? What is what you're doing? This disappears. Okay. Now, this is the EMG of the picture. What did you see? What did you hear? The dive bomber, sir. Uh, yes, got dive bomber. Bomb. Yes, got the biotonic. So, in fact, we had a, in fact, it's a myotonic dystrophy. It's not a myotonic, myotonic dystrophy, congenital myotonia, autosomal recessive type. Autosomal recessive type is to the A to age group. And they may not have, it may not be that muscular as uh, myotonia congenita. And they can also see wasting and weakness as well. Now, this is autosomal recessive type of uh, myotonic congenita. Now, I'll show another video. This boy came with the history of Enabled to lift both upper limbs and you've been getting out for many years. All are similar cases, I'm sure. Now, this is that story. He said he cannot, okay. Okay, okay. he cannot lift up the upper limb and also not get up. Otherwise, examining is a muscular individual. He has no weakness, no, I mean, no other complaint. Your distal muscles are normal and media uh, normal, sensory normal, everything normal. Well, this is the combined the patient. Examination a well bit individual, painless, normal, motor, no wasting, could not lift up from both hands and could not get on stool. Distal muscles normal, TTR normal, sensory normal. This is from presence of a childhood. What do you think about that possibility? Pardon? Myotonia congenita. Myotonia muscular dystrophy. Yeah, congenital myopathy also. Yeah. Muscular individual. Yeah, good. Very good. It's a very muscular individual. So, you know, what did I do? Let's see to prove the point. You can see Jacob in this uh, video. Okay. 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 
they did act but cannot release it with okay, the first one due to tonic spasm due to the seizures perspective of the action second due to dystonic contraction again because of no irregular positioning third one due to release of the grip due to myotonia third and fourth one due to myotonia okay any questions otherwise we'll go to the next one Okay, shall we go to the next one? Sir, one doubt, sir. Yeah, please. Sir, that lady that you, uh, she had unilateral uh, symptoms, no? So that can occur? Like, yeah, that can occur. Asymmetry can occur in, in the recessive type. Usually, they, they, in fact, the lady had bilateral. If you look at the walking, it is asymmetrical, but more on one side, like more on the left side. She said sometimes it occurs only on one side. Okay, sir. Thank you. But as is correctly, more often it is bilateral. Whenever strictly unilateral, not person the other side thing away from myotonic distribution, things like that. You have to think of it. Focal condition, I have to think. Something like it, other condition like it is turning. Process will, can you say, any kind of can you disturb it? Sir, in DRD, is it possible to have a uh, onset in the upper limbs? DRD? You know, in, in DRD can present with various manifestations. See, it, according, I have not seen, I have most of the thing I have seen is on the lower limb. They can present with right test cramp. They can present with uh, torticollis, beginning with. They can present with, um, uh, not torticollis, scyphoscoliosis. Then confined, the, the abnormal limb can be confined to the upper limb or lower limb. All can be spread. Even right test cramp, they have to spread with the uh, with the uh, DRT. So the manifestation, the presentation can be quite varied in DRT. And adult tons of DRT present only with Parkinson's. They don't have dystonia also. Some of the adult tons of Parkinson's are really DRT because they respond to small dose of levodopa and remain without progression. That means that's a type of uh, DRT. Any other? In DRT can also present the laryngeal spasms, like a strider. The case reports of strider due to uh, DRT. Any other question? Okay. Now, these two are interesting, short, interesting cases. This patient came with combined difficulty in reading, but can see other objects very well. Her problem is no problem in. Um, seeing anything, 
except that when she starts reading with putting on the glass, she gets difficult. She cannot see. The vision gets blurred. So she changed her glasses many times without any benefit. Ophthalmological examination, neural examination, surgery is not. Okay? Right? Well, let us see the video of the patient. She has to read with the glasses on. Okay. What do you observe? Okay. It will go move forward and backward. And look at what happened the year. If she take the spectacle, there is no moment of the When she put on the spectacle back, the ear movement starts. I'm taking it again. In disappears. It comes back again. That is why she gets blurring your vision only when she uses it. She has also got some dystonic contact on the lower limb. Did you see this one? So, what is the diagnosis here? It's a this dystonia, probably induced. Exactly. It's a, action dystonia. Yeah. It's not called action dystonia, precipitate, it's a just a antagonistic. That means some factors, triggering factors, that make the dystonia worse. Some of the factors may make the dystonia improve. Okay. So here the dystonia is made precipitated by putting the uh, putting the the stimulation on the back of the ear by the handle of the uh, spectacles. Okay. I will show another video. Okay. This so the reading difficulties because of the movement of the spectacles or exactly the, because the eyes are the, 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 oh, the, the yeah. ears, yeah. Going, ears are moving back and forth and that by the dystonic contraction oh, yeah. the movement is possibly oh, yeah. of the well and this lady has come with the beginning of her finger that's her complaint look at the lady here this is her complaint When you put the spectacles on, the movement disappears. Become less, much less. The moment removes the spectacle, it becomes much more prominent and more frequent. The other trick movement by which we can make it disappear is when you clench the teeth. When you clench the teeth, it disappears. When you remove the uh, clenching, it comes back in. Anybody say? Ask her to crunch the teeth and release it. You know, she's crunching it, releasing it. Anybody say? crunching it, disappears. So this is again, same thing, dystonia. Here the other way around. Here the putting the spectacle make the dystonic conduction disappear. So also cleansing the teeth and make the dystonic conduction uh, okay. This can be functional, sir. This one, some people can do this one also. <laughs> yeah, it can be. It can. You, you, what is a discovery? Some people very difficult. See, for that matter, any involuntary movement can be functional. You know? somebody comes with a very awkward. Suppose you come tomorrow with a particular awkward movement, which is not described in the literature. You can call it as functional. Perfectly right. Suppose you subsequent follow follow up years. You see many patients with a similar abnormal movement. Will you consider functional? No. Something similar to that. This I have, this is the fourth or fifth case I'm seeing with ear movements like that. That does not appear to be functional movement. Especially then, especially with the, the precipitating and disappearing with the trick movements. But this so, disappears with clenching of teeth, no? So then yeah, yeah. There can be multiple triggers. Just like right eyes can you know, you change the pen, the right scam disappears. You put a hand underneath your forearm and then try to write. Right eyes scam can get much alleviated. So there can be multiple triggers that can alleviate or precipitate uh, dystonic contraction. 
Sir, uh, is this, uh, could this be due, due to the large uh, earrings because the weight uh, this, uh, this trend is getting precipitated? Hello, we can, I do not know. In fact, I still do not know. The old lady, the previous lady, you know, I put her on Pacitine, she improved. But subsequently, she came for a follow-up and asked her, her everything has disappeared. Now, are you still on Pacitine? No, no, that I stopped after two months. I've said, after stopping Pacitine, nothing happened. I do not know whether they, if somebody asks me, I can be punched, nobody can say this not. But when involuntary movement occurs repeatedly, it's seen in many individuals in the same fashion, it is more likely to be organic rather than functional. That's all one can say. Otherwise, any involuntary movement for that matter can be functional. Sir, this is only in one year, sir. No, both years, both years. Okay. Uh, sir, I still remember your, uh, uh, you're telling that uh, some doctor was telling that the, uh, this uh, function and the torticolis, is, it's, uh, if it is a uh, true one, he would uh, stop his practice like that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That one case of PKD. <laughs> PKD, sir? Yeah, that's often diagnosed. Unless they know about the need, they will call it as only functional, you know? Okay. Now, this is a long case. Do I have time, time for a case? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, this is a bit long case. Still, it's uh, when, uh, worth knowing about this case. This is a story of a 12 year old girl. Her complaint started at the age of five years as recurrent vomiting, followed by seizures while in the school on 31 10 2012. No history of any headache or fever. She was loaded with phenytoin and the seizures were controlled. CT scan at that time revealed temporal hypodensity. On the suspicion of encephalitis, patient was given a cyclone because recurrent seizures for the first time with vomiting and showing hypodensity and put as encephalitis, treated with encephalitis. So this was the CSF of study at that time, CSF of stone, we wrote 10 cells. Protein, however, was 18, sugar normal, CT scan is already told. So MRI was done, sensitive of encephalitis, left to parental, focal cortical, subcortical, white matter, white matter, that's it. EG done on that, on 3110, that uh, few days later showed, focal spikes coming from that, uh, Region that is beside the right right temporal region, not right temporal, right central parietal region, mainly is to be C4 region. Okay, the MRI was done that showed that hypodensity, hyperdensity in the left parietal region, as a <coughs> temporal parietal region. It is also seen in the in the anterior commissure region near the basal canidia, in, in the ventral striatal region, also the hyperdensity city was seen. There was no contrast enhancement showing the hyperdensity. city. Okay, see so, you So this is the thing, so this is the course in the event. The patient became totally symptomatic and discharged. However, repeat EEG done three weeks later showed persistent slowing on the left side. But that is quite unusual for me because I she became perfectly normal. Then still three weeks later, persistent slowing is persistent. That made me very uncomfortable. Otherwise, the patient became mentally normal. Every day, everything uh, became entirely normal. The repeat MRI was done, which showed disappearance of the lesion. The previous lesion which is saw disappeared. So anticonvulsant stopped, tapered and stopped, and patient remained asymptomatic for next one and a half years. Okay. Till this admission. Asymptomatic and discharged. Uh, repeat EEG taken three weeks later showed persistent slowing on the left side, which became normal in the EEG. Taken one month later. Then one month later, that is doing disappeared. 
So the anticonvulsant is stopped after six months. The mean asymptomatic is two years. On 17 cent 2014, that is nearly two years later, patient had another episode of seizure, followed by some word finding difficulty after the ictus. This is she got a word finding difficulty. Examination shaded right human paralysis, facial paralysis, clumsiness of the right upper limb, detail normal bilaterally, and are indefinite. Okay, so there's some left hemispherical lesion producing seizure. Now, this time, this is the MRI that is taken here the second time. MRI did not show much of an abnormality, even though she had, uh, but there was some abnormality which is mentioned by her. Posterior, it appeared now. The repeat EEG was taken, which showed I mean, EEG consistent with partial seizure, probable focus of C4, just like the previous one. But compared to the previous EEG, the frequency spikes were decreased. The, the, during the current admission, patients started on AADs. Repeat MRI showed T2 hypernatus in the posterior. And this was the finding which was the second MRI with that particular film I couldn't locate. Hypernatus leads in the left posterior middle frontal gyrus with gyriform enhancement. So, what they said, then I said I could confuse why the patient would occur again in the case. So, the patient became, since the patient had different seizures, the vaccine and meaning MRI lesions. The possibility of short term in epilepsy versus mitochondrial cytopathy was considered. So I thought I'd get a better second opinion. So I referred to my guru, Dr. Radhakrishnan, sir. He was at that time in Manipal Medical Hospital, Medical Manipal. So I sent the patient over to you. you, you did you follow the story? First, he got a focal seizure with focal finding in the MRI, he spikes, which disappears without any long term treatment, remained illegitimate. Again, coming back. With a different site of lesion with focal seizure, now presenting with some other focal deficit, like weight fine difficulty and right hemiparesis, minimal hemiparesis. So at, at Manipad, sir repeated the CSF, which showed protein of 14. Initially, it was high, it was, uh, it was uh, and two cells lymphocytes. Sorry, protein was initially also normal, this time also normal. Initially, lymphocyte lymphocyte was there, which is much less now. AD level was 0.8. ESF lactate was 12.8. This is the bleeding. So MRA done the Manipal was repeated again. That was normal. Here, when I sent the patient, had some posterior front, middle frontal gyrus hypernensity. That was not there in the second MRA so, uh, when uh, Sir repeated the MRA. So EEG was done, which showed uh, bilateral frontocentral spikes. Initially, it was only on the right side. Now it has become bilateral. Slow activity of six to seven yards over the left temporal region, which became more pronounced during hyperventilation. Bilateral independent frontocentral spikes were noted maximum on the left side. Patient remained asymptomatic. MRM is repeated again one year later, which is normal. This is a normal MRI repeat. The cell repeat one year later, patient became all right. Again, one year later, on 2016, patient complained of weak, mild weakness of the left upper limb. This time she went to, I, uh, she came to me straight away, sent back to the sir. Sir so saw the patient, she had no, could not find any deficit, even though patient complained of left upper limb weakness. MRI was also repeated normally. This is the, at that time, sir was in uh, Ames. So he saw the patient. He found out this finding. Then next year, the last time which I saw the patient, 2018, that weakness also the, where, uh, improved. The water complaint, she had early improved. It's the fourth time she had developed in 2018. Patient had a word finding difficulty again for a persistent dysarthria and admitted to the PRS hospital in so examination to reveal slurring dysarthria, word finding difficulty just like previously, normal aphasia, clumsiness of the right hand. 
So MRI was done, uh, repeat MRI was done. Now the lesion was seen in the left superior, superior uh, frontal region here. That shows the other cuts also. And also in the cingulate cortex. And also there is hyperdensity. And MRI EEG showed bilateral hemispherical slowing. So again, I doubt what it what I'm dealing with. So recurrent, so I thought recurrent uh, of autoimmune encephalitis versus Landau Kepner syndrome. But the latter condition I was not very sure because there is no persistent EEG abnormalities in between. So she was again put on major but this alone. Again, I sent back to Dr. Radish again. So seen by him in 2018, the sir repeated serum and CSO was sent for anti-NMD antibody. Anti-NMD antibody was positive in both the serum and CSO. That is four years after the onset of the recurrent and relapsing illness. The MR, uh, this is the, uh, the MRI was done, MRI was not done. CSF showed TC now 97 cells per cubic millimeter protein sugar normal. Patient was reviewed again in May 2019. MRI repeated normal. And the NMD antibody was repeated again after one year, which became negative. So mind, mind you, the patient was not treated with any long-term steroid. Only short course was given at that time. And uh, it were, I think the answer said it don't give any steroid at all. Just followed up even though antibody was positive. Because patient was improving spontaneously. And they made a symptomatic for one year. Now repeat MRI after just repeated it, it was normal. And the anti NMD and you repeat it again was not. So, again, the serum sample test negative and NMD and antibody. This is 2019. Hence, so I decided that not to give a long term immunosuppression was deferred. It was in fact planning whether the antibody is persisting to give antibody. I talked to him, was planning to give long term uh, immunosuppression. But the antibody became negative on its own. So, immunosuppression was with that. The, in the teratoma was also looked for that was negative. In April 2020, patient had acute onset of visual loss in the left eye. No pain. The examination, that's the time when it's last I saw the patient on the previous this time. Visual could only hand movement was present on the left side, right now. There is RAPD on the left eye. One day by that optic disc pad. This is the MRI in the last uh, 2020 when she had blindness. She had bilateral optic tract hyperdensity here. Again, you can make it on the left side here. Now on the right side also, you can make it out. You can get this optic chasm going to this optic tract. You can make, say, the hyperdensity in the uh, Optic tract. This is the optic tract showing the hyperdensity in the 3D flare. You can make it out very clearly in that picture in that contents. This is again the ending of the glatogenic body part indicating the hyperdensity. In addition, there is some viral thickening on the right parietal cortex. Previous lesion was on the left side. Now it is seen on the right side some garral thickening, which you can make out here. There is some hyperdensity in the thalamus. And the garral thickening and hyperdensity in the parietal cortex. The thalamic lesion. And this is the optic tract showing that hyperdensity. Is a deficient filling, deficient normal. Cervical spinal cord screening was done, thinking the possible value of NMO, or NMO disease that was negative, and that is also normal. 
any profit was repeated normal us abdominal no teratoma nmo mo antibody was sent which is negative because in the bilateral optic tract hypertensity then the patient is examined on 26 5 2021 was apparently normal or did 2015 so and so this is not the story so this is the story of the patient so what do you think about the illness this is a very sir, very long story sir uh, uh, some of the earlier mri also showed some para when when the kind of hyper in the intensities subtle hyperensis so i would uh, think could be some sort of uh, vitamin response to uh, encephalopathy He never, she was never given any vitamin. Thiamine, biotin or something? No, the, it's very unlikely to be vitamin to some sense of preparation because you know, these are all discrete episodes occurring in between, shifting from one to one side. This vitamin and sense of preparation, they are almost symmetrical finding, bilateral finding in between. These are all focal findings. The spike disease is also focal. Very unlikely for a vitamin to respond to your vitamin. So, it could be in better... Now, could it be the mitochondrial cytopathy? There's two possibilities. Second like, one is mitochondrial cytopathy. Second was recurrent autoimmune encephalitis. I have yes. seen NMD encephalitis. I have a recurrent taking courses. I have seen one, one of the lady had three episodes. In between patients became all right. And three episodes, very permanent psychiatric manifestations. She will just for two, that episode lasts for two to three months and subsides. With treatment, of course, it subsides. But here, without any long-term treatment, patients are improving. Antibody became normal without any treatment. But in between, antibody is easy, becoming positive. See, according to literature, anti-NMD antibody in the CS of serum is very, very specific for the condition. In that case, we cannot explain the, with mitochondrial cytopathy, sir. So. Yeah, that, that, no, in, not, you know, what I was telling that the previously I considered these two possibilities. And the patient initially presented. So this yes. antibody was done there by in, in only by Sarah then for the first time. I wish they thought only simple encephalitis and recurrent. Then I thought maybe a mitochondrial and this thing. I send the patient to the Ashram Sir for the for the work. So there they have got a facility for all antibody to be done. So, so the melas could be a possibility, no? So yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. so Sir also thought mitochondrial possibility. So the MRI lactate, CSF lactate was done. That's no. So last MRI is uh, more in favor of uh, zero negative and NMSD. NMS vector. Yeah, that's yes. it. That, yeah, <laughs> there is the optic tract involvement was very specific, very typical of NMS vector. But there was a spinal cord lesion. NMS antibody was negative. That can be like, negative sometimes. Yeah, that so that's a possibility you have to keep in mind. But see the course of events. You know, see NMS is a very very uh, dangerous situation. So really? was, uh, what would the lactate because the lactate was uh, 12.5 was lactate it uh, was normal lactate was the serum lactate csf lactate and the mri lactate was normal so, so has... what is the cut off in this case cut off uh, yeah, no, I, I can, it was uh, it was normal because i i can show that report values are all cut and put here uh, of the uh, aims uh, picture Uh, the cut off. Uh, not written there. It is right. It's written. I can the only thing is you take time to. Not this year. Not here. The investigation part comes. Okay, somewhere it is there. I read the specific written is not. The CSF lactate is twelve point six. So they normal. Been, yeah. Go, go ahead, sir. Yeah, yeah. So there has been reports that ten percentage of the HSV encephalitis, so called, even if the CSF HSV is positive, they will uh, even if uh, in the acute stage after ten days of antibot uh, antivirals, the patient not responding, and seriously. If we follow up, the uh, acyclovir resistance is not there. But then, uh, 
uh, when the children are being followed up up to 21 days they will give a cyclover and then uh, thinking that it could be but they will give a trial of methylpenicillin patient will uh, be better and then they have followed up over a period of so many years and later on when they present like this intermittently they are found to be nmda positive yeah. it is been said that hsv antigen will will be residing in the uh, like antigen will be present inside the lymphocytes in the brain and will slowly trigger the antigenic stimulation which can be intermittent which cannot be continuous also the first mri the unusual features could be appearance of thalamic lesions appearance of external capsule lesions and posterior temporal and lateral temporal lesions which give a, a which are not typically seen in an hsv encephalitis so this uh, radiologically they found that it is a clue and yeah. when they found out that seriously when they found out that one third in fact one third of so called hsv acyclovir resist, resistant hsv encephalitis are subsequently found out to be an, anti nmda encephalitis and they have this wonderful this thing of spontaneous recovery so they were in actually in a dilemma whether these young girls mostly is occur in young girls and they were uh, one they were very worried whether to start immunosuppression because the reproductive age group so many factors but when they present with the first symptom of immunoencephalitis we talk with the relatives and they will start immunosuppression in a low dose that is what they, they say sir so that is the story of nmda encephalitis and some children are found to have this ovarian teratoma which is very small initially but seriously when that uh, cct was being done they found that this removal of this will uh, remove no. all the symptoms that is what bindu what they said is perfectly right i think that's the case in this particular case see we all know that hsv can precipitate nmd encephalitis later on but that is not like a recurrent or remitting condition as you said Now, as you perfectly said this pattern fits in with the case history which you are referring to because the antigen remaining there intermittently triggering the nmd release is a perfect thing going in between the nmd and this is become normal okay the area the ovarian teratoma there have been cases where the ovary has been removed with a strong suspicion of uh, nmd encephalitis and the biopsy showed only small teratoma so they were even courageous enough to remove the ovary because of the resistance and nmd encephalitis in fact patient go to psychiatric side more often not the neurologist that yes. yes. all nmd usually people go to psychiatrist first but this case as you said is correct because patient is remitting on its own relapsing coming back again remitting without any specific reason so as you said some triggering factors which are releasing or precipitating the release of the anti nmd antibody which gets a new and like the classical one gets uh, remitted by itself that's a that i think that's a best possibility possible in this case, in this patient So, but this in the uh, in this episode, he has predominant vision and the optic tract involved, which is predominant no, white matter. No, that I agree with you. That's not the common thing. But see, many thing, anything is possible. See, if you take the overall picture, what Bindu told is correct, because he had initial encephalitic illness. Obviously, I want to very much take encephalitis, but subsequent causes are remitting, relapsing, and one day, antibody became positive, and then became an empty. and what it is is very specific for it and the body person is very specific for nmd encephalitis so the patient had encephalitis separate which is recovered now the regarding the clinical manifestations anything is possible see we are it some some somebody is reporting some of the new finding it will come up later on in literature this entity also i am doing for the first time nobody knew see they she was when they was telling that the presentation is quite varied from the classic nmd cytoplasms in the parietal lobe and thalamic lesions which are the not the typical set of nmd so it would be also the multiple adm like features uh, where yeah. green white matter are involved in Correct. the multiple Correct. episodes right okay so in fact i did not know what the case was i just got it because nobody could also make what it was i think the most logical thing would be what we do say the recurrent so, radum most of the radum later on turned out to be moog yeah that's a moog antibody yeah yeah here moog was negative 
ఎన్నెమో వాస్ నెగటివ్ ఓన్లీ ఎన్నెండి వాస్ పాజిటివ్ and it was the patient started on a any immuno substance in this case no 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 it just not started that's it see in fact i asked sir say why didn't you start immuno substance so the patient was asymptomatic and just because seeing the antibody or can it start then it's not start but subsequent it repeat nmd negative so his decision was correct you would have started immuno substance from the very beginning but this is this all by experience you no know, long time experience will teach the patient by sir so he said patient is asymptomatic why should we start an immunosuppression for a young girl like this we'll wait if symptoms suffer we'll start at that point of time so we waited well, with uh, mn and we did so and what's the status of the oh, oh, the the ovary in this case yeah we did that from there is a test from mm this one the, the mri was taken this normal that did uh, in a role of pet in this case a pet scan or something no i think pet is not useful for uh, over in that sir did your vision improve improve vision but vision did your vision improve the the, uh, the last part uh, the vision improvement i do not know because i lost follow up the patient by seeing the findings and <laughs> the driver sir he saw that he said it's much better is better is improved improved i did not see the patient later on, but but what i heard from him was that patient improved yeah so, so should we give him this person at this stage sir, because yeah, vision that, is that involved is, and that, that is what i am also thinking yeah, long term immuno suppression we should have started yeah. earlier uh that's <laughs> that's a debatable thing no very debatable yeah. Uh, sir if the patient has, suppose a patient has a neuromyelitis and the antibodies are negative yeah. then yeah. we give him the suppressants no yeah, so no then doubt, in... no, no doubt about it the clinical picture is very definite see the course is little different from that of endem definitely you should give him the suppressant suppose somebody has got an mri typical of endem or bilateral optic nerve movement simultaneously coming with then when sensitivity you should definitely give long term endem suppressants but the clinical picture should fit in with radiological should be fit in with here nothing is fitting in so there is a doubt sir can i ask one doubt yeah sure sir if uh, we are attributing all the symptoms in this case to nmda then each time she had the clinical features we should have had the antibodies positive for nmda no? like every time she had the clinical features she should have had this antibodies positive but during the follow up her antibodies were negative no sir how can we explain it no in between the antibody was negative when the patient was having in symptomatic period antibody became positive subsequently one year later without treatment the antibody was checked that was negative the third time when we did it was, it was symptomatic still antibody was negative that one that part is correct no but antibody and need not necessarily be present all the time with the encephalitis but if it is present it is specific okay. other way around if it is positive it is nmd interface if it is negative it does not exclude nmd effort i had a patient who had classical picture of nmd so the psychosis or a vision pain here anybody is negative here i'm done here i'm done negative then you were at a so it treated as encephalitis then she had over intertrauma okay she not improve the immune suppression then search for over intertrauma that is published the over intertrauma is removed by the improvement so that antibody was there this one detected okay sir thank you sir 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 in this sir in this patient sir yeah i uh, repeated mri is whatever the sites of uh, brain are involved that we see most commonly with mitochondrial cytopathy also sir only exception is some pleocytosis in the csf uh, that is only out against the mitochondrial cytopathy no sir this patient yeah the mitochondrial cytopathy is a possible which can present like that but um, usual pattern is in merla secret cortical support involvement along the pareto occipital region is the classical one here it is there but occurring in other areas also thalamus is there in the and the, and the frontal lobe is that the last picture was in the medial frontal lateral frontal uh, it might be said it's a possibility but well, there is no way to confirm it i wonder the classic thing they say that mrs showing lactate elevation even in the unaffected area of the brain in mitochondria okay. 
Here, even the affected area MRS is normal, and CSF practice is not elevated. So there is no clue to suspect metaphorical. Okay, sir. Okay. Sir, in a three case leg, you are planning to be immunosuppressed. No, I think the sir has not started it. No. Suppose if you want to give in this age group, which yeah. is the best immunosuppression steroid or something. Hello, we have to give asatiaparin. Asatiaparin. Yeah. The steroid can't be continued long term. Asatiaparin is the best thing. With the severe illness, you have to go to rituximab. But considering the childbearing age and all, it is going to get married or asatiaparin will be preferred one. To roll out over in Dartoma, USD or CT, which is better, sir? MRI is the idea, then come CT instead. Ma. So, MRI with contrast or plain, sir? MRI with contrast. Because it may not be contrast in NC, but MRI with contrast is ideal. Next time is CT, but USD abdomen can miss. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Bindu, for your basic diagnosis. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, one yeah. doubt, sir. Yeah. Uh, sir, to consider the uh, NMDA with ovarian teratoma, is the age against us? So it started at 12 years, almost 12 years of age. If yeah, I'm wrong. This is more after the age of 18, but less than less than 18 years, it can occur in about, in, in about 8% of the patients. After the age of uh, 18 age, the cancer will be more. Nearly to 30 to 40 percent, they can have 30 percent or something they can have. But less than 80, 18, also you can put a uh, term. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I mean, any, if we can send the reference, you can send Thank the you. reference. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much, sir. Good yeah. day. Sir. Good day. Good day. Thank you. Good day. Good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. Not good night. Thank you, sir. Good day. Thank you, sir. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very much.